All right, let's get going here. Township committee meeting uh, June 21st, 2021. This is via Zoom remote access, normally held at the municipal building 770 Cooper Town Road in Alanco, New Jersey. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Here. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Here. Ms. Holland? Here. Mr. Olet? Here. Mr. Templeton? Here. Also present, Mr. Schwab, our township administrator. Uh, let's see, Mrs. Laura, municipal clerk, Mrs. Martin, deputy municipal clerk, Mr. Fenimore is expected any moment, Chief uh, DeSanto, and we have Aaron Provenzano as our technical specialist. Uh, flag salute, please. Lost your mic. What's that? You, you, from, from my perspective, you froze. I couldn't hear you. Oh. I don't know if anyone else saw the same thing. To the flag, the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Sunshine Statement, Mrs. Lohr. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. Written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. The um, public remote public meeting statement and uh, advanced public comments will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail and is received no later than six hours prior to the uh, commencement of this meeting will be acknowledged during the meeting. And uh, those members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the public comment sessions may do so by either um, the audio option or by typing their comments or questions via the Zoom chat option. And then the um, agenda for this meeting is, uh, has been available on the Delanco Township website, delancotownship.com. Thank you. All right. Uh... Hope we'll have the same good luck that we had last Monday with the uh, weather. There's two uh, two lines of thunderstorms coming, so hopefully the power will stay on and the Zoom connections will remain intact. So uh, let's see, meeting is now open to the public for comments and questions. This is session one. And uh, please unmute, uh, state your name and address. And uh, do we have any uh, preliminary questions or in the chat, Mrs. Laura, to start? No, for the record, there were no um, advanced comments or questions, and I will monitor the chat. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Session in one is now open to the public for, for, uh, for questions, comments. Hearing and seeing no questions or comments from the public, uh, question and comment section of the meeting is now closed to the public. There will be a second uh, commentary period, public comment period at the uh, further down in the agenda. Comments or reports? Uh, Township Administrator, Mr. Schwab. Nothing new other than things that are on the agenda. All right, uh, department heads. Uh, we'll start off with uh, Chief DeSanto. On mute. About, about now. Good. Gotcha. Give you an update on the body camera uh, system that I was looking for in the future. Uh, I got some information about cost and um, I'll give you a brief summary, but the cost is not gonna be a major impact, uh, especially with the grant that we're definitely gonna get and potentially with the request of increase of uh, a number of cameras that I made, we might even do better, but We'll make the assumption that we're going to get the 12,000 that uh, we've been awarded. So the uh, system, the way it breaks down, it's a five-year plan. For those five years, um, you are included redaction software, unlimited cloud storage. You receive, um, I got a proposal for 14 cameras. And after three years, all cameras were replaced with brand new equipment. Now the um, 
understand that what we're doing right now, the current system, we're paying approximately $11,000 a year in support services, meaning we're paying $3,000 a year for redaction software. We're paying nearly $8,000 in licensing, warranties, and, um, and also uh, software maintenance. So the breakdown of the cost in 2022 would be the first year would be $20,000, but you consider the $12,000 grant that we got and uh, the $8,000 that we put out annually. So that is a, a net uh, effect to us, a zero net effect. And in years two through five, we'll be paying $8,000 and which is less than the approximately $11,000 we're paying annually now. So we'll have better equipment, unlimited storage, um, you know, and by the time uh, year six rolls around, it's gonna be time to get new cameras anyway and we'll, we'll start the process over. The uh, thing to keep in the back of your mind now, this is only body cameras, doesn't ca ca carry the, uh, or, you know, it doesn't address the in-car cameras, which are gonna have to be addressed in 2020, 23. And uh, I've been briefing Lieutenant Tilger and he has a good handle of uh, what he's going to need to do in 2023, but um, I, I think uh, you know this is a the best way to proceed, and uh, we'll put it in our 2022 budget, and um, and you'll see how the cost uh, uh, really um, not going to be a big change to the daily operation, or I should say the annual operation budget of the police department. Any questions? I know it's a lot of information at one time, and you know I can go further detail at the presentation uh, well, in um, January. Well, actually, I won't be there, so excuse me. <laughs> Lieutenant can go into further detail in, in January. Okay, that, that's all I got. Oh, uh, the uh, Kate probably knows this. They're scheduled to cap off the gas line for 507 Burlington Avenue. I, I believe it's scheduled for Tuesday, Wednesday. So um, I think once they cap that gas line, then then the building will actually start coming down. Thank you. Cool. Chief, how's the uh, tractor trailer wrangling going with uh, Allen Enterprise Drive? Uh, so far, I mean, Coopertown Road has not been uh, affected. I, I know Enterprise Drive has trucks on it every day, and um, but it's not uh, it's not overflowing to the intersection. Uh, they're I guess they're managing it so the trucks are you know when they start backing up towards the intersection they bring some in, but eventually um, I've been informed that the signs are going to be delivered this week. The remainder of the signs, and Mr. Fenimore, Mr. Fenimore is going to reach out to the uh, county highway department and get them to put up the no parking signs, and then it's just a matter of knocking on some doors and trailers and telling them they can't stay there. <clears throat> you know, it's uh, right now it's there is no signage, so the truck drivers get early and then they hang out on Enterprise Drive, but it should be pretty easy to clear them out once uh, the signs get up. Have you uh, had reports or any instances of uh, truckers uh, late night deliveries or, you know, they're arriving late and they, they overnight there? Um, no reports, but I wouldn't doubt it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a matter of um, them uh, making the choice. Do they drive 30 minutes to Bordentown or do they stay there? And, um, but like I said, when the signs are up, is there's not going to be any uh, hesitation about them staying there. They'll be moved okay. along. All right. Thank you. No problem. Uh, Mr. Fenimore on. He's on. Yes, I am. There he is. Mr. Yep. Fenimore, do you have a, do you have a report of, of happenings for your department this, the past two, three weeks? Yes. Um, we, uh, We've been quite busy with all the rain and just keeping up with the grass. Uh, we cut all township properties four times. Um, we picked up 36 uh, cubic yards of chipped up brush. Um, I've been staying on the compost site, turning the leaves, 
and um, they're really getting broken down. Uh, we finally got mulch and compost for the residents. Um, we also uh, finally finished all the signs in town, the street signs, so they're all done now. And as Jesse was saying, that uh, we're waiting for the signs this week, and the county's going to put them up. Um, I, I wanted them to put the, all the signs up at once instead of them coming in back and forth. That's, that, that doesn't work. And also the county also fixed the sidewalk on 815 Delaware that uh, one of the trees went over and, uh, you know, cracked the sidewalk up pretty good. And um, that's all I got. All right, thank you. What happens to, with the old signs? Do they get recycled or reprinted? Yes. If okay. the sign is not bent or, you know, sometimes they get, you know, cut or bent on the ends, if the, strain, the sign's not straight, okay, I mean, they don't like to do the, to put the new stuff on it. But okay. the street signs, they the blanks can get reused again, and even like the stop signs and the other um, the signages that we have. Okay. So we we save quite a bit of money by doing that. Right. John, you, question, Mike, if it's okay. Uh, you you said the county came and took the tree out uh, or fixed the sidewalk on Delaware Avenue. Yes, we have a mutual agreement. They've been doing things for us. Um, what was that again? Are they are they going to bill us for that? Yes, they got we we they billed us. Okay, and it was actually <laughs> cheaper cheap. than any price that I got. So, okay, it was a tree, the a tree, bit large tree that came out, a township tree that came uh, was uprooted, uh, snapped during that bad storm uh, about a year ago, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. What, what the was guy's that been real patient. He's been real patient, uh, waiting to get get it fixed. And so I reached out to the county, and and I think it was like around a thousand dollars. And he they replaced seven blocks, so that's that's uh -huh. pretty good. I, I I said to replace five, but they replaced seven uh, because they couldn't tie it in. Uh, they had to tie them in as best as they could, you know. They couldn't do the whole length, but uh, what, what they did a nice job. Down? What was that address? 815, 815, Delaware. Yeah, I don't know if that tree was removed from our inventory, so I'll, I'll look into that. I think that's the tree. It had to be. It had to be. That, that was the that storm was the, one of the storm year. ground. That was like one of the 13 trees that went down. Yeah, on Delaware. That bad storm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right down, it was a straight line right down Delaware Avenue. Yeah, June 3rd really last year. John, do you want to report on uh, the issue that the resident brought up last week that you dealt with, uh, discussed with the resident from the oh, trees on by Lane. West Avenue in the, in the basin? Yeah, yeah, the, um, I spoke Perkins. to uh, Bill, Bill Tremble and um, what he what he was concerned about is that uh, he's getting some trees removed, and um, there's a tree that's already in the middle of the woods, which would be very difficult to get to it. And he's afraid that um, as it dries out, and his neighbors in the back do fireworks, that it's liable to set it on fire. You know, a dead tree, uh, right? Yeah, the dead tree. But he's getting a couple of dead trees removed, and I went up there today and tried to cut, you know, the underbrush. But uh, all the underbrush is all loaded with poison ivy. Uh, there's a couple big stumps. So however we try to do this, is it is not going to be an easy thing to do. Now, that the indicated tree that... Is to, the tree is leaning away from his house. There's no damage, I mean, you know, can't be no damage going to his house. It's going out in the woods towards the ditch. He was, so they were complaining that there might tree. be, 
John, they're complaining it might be debris that fell on their property from our property. Is that correct? I didn't see any debris. Yeah, that's what I think uh, she complained about last week. That's that well, was the. I, I, it, okay. That's not what he told me. Okay, and you didn't see it, so you were there, right? Yeah, and I was there. I, you know, we walked the whole property, okay. and I was there again today. And uh, okay. um, so maybe we misunderstood yeah. her last week. That's what I thought she said. Okay. Well, you know, the, there's a. Uh, um, He's, he's got like right on the borderline, but he knows that they're his trees. He's got also two big dead oaks that he's going to get removed. So yeah, I know Jeff um, has already put them on notice, right? So yeah, that that whole woods divider there is a ticking time bomb of you know we got things that are dying and got a couple letters from people where large branches have fallen on their yards from our trees in that area and. You know, it's unless you're going to cut down every dead or old tree. Uh, yeah, it, 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 that's, a, that's a nightmare. Believe me, it's a nightmare. If anyone's got any ideas. Well, uh, John, we at Shade Tree, we got a uh, a letter from Conroy. Did you yeah, talk right to him? On Iowa. He, yeah, on Iowa. At the, he's got problems with his woods, too. Um, but really if the tree falls in the woods it's the woods problem you know it's not we can't go cleaning out that woods unless we want to budget for it next year uh in our tree uh, removal what do you think about a project like that well, well there's just remember that there's just also remember you'll have to do from um West Avenue, West Avenue to Illinois. Yep. Mm -hmm. There used to be a, a dirt road along there, and that you're going to have to get involved in that. And I mean, it's uh, and then you got from West Avenue all the way to Perkins. Even yep. though there's not a road on the one side of uh, the West Avenue by um, Ray, um, what was his nice. name? He was on the shade tree. Um, but he he's got a you know the woods and there's trees in there. I mean, I mean you could you could you could use your whole budget just trying to clean out what you can do. I, I don't know if you know it might be a good guy. It might be a good thing to ask the 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 guy that does all the coming out and looking at the trees. What was the name, Kevin? Kevin Sebelia, Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Might be way. just a good idea to. Um, Call him and ask him what he recommends. Okay, you and know that what? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll uh, yeah. I mean, because you're not going to get no bucket trucks in there. So, you're going to have to do had, everything, and it's all plan. loaded with poison ivy. Yeah, if there was something that's a plan of what to do, what to remove, if we need access, then you get temporary written access from neighbors. And if if access was the only issue, but there's more than just access. He might right. be able to advise what you actually should do with the trees, remove, replace, because otherwise you could just side wipe it all out and end up with no trees. So yep. They're all dying in there. It's a mess. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's a mess. I mean, just, the whole just I, was just, I was just looking at the tax map. It's, it's nearly a thousand feet long and, uh, 60 to 70 feet wide. So it's it's a significant area that, that strip of land there. Um, it's almost, a, it should be a fire break. Um, we, uh, we calculated the cost to clear that I, a few years ago. I don't know, um, I don't know if it was this term I was on or the previous term, but we estimated about $100,000 to clear out from Illinois all the way over to uh, West. And uh, I think at the time we just didn't, we didn't have the money to do it. So, and is it that important to uh, clear it? And it's desirable. And it's not it for making pavement, it's for making a stone road. Right. Serves a purpose though, anyhow. Yeah, it's a shame, but I mean, there's no easy way of getting back there. And uh, even Bill Tremble said, he doesn't know how. I said, well, there's only one way you can do, you're gonna have to climb them. 
somebody's going to have to get in there and climb them to take his two down. But uh, to to get to the others, I mean, um, you know, I mean, how crazy do we want to get? That that's that's what you got to figure out. I mean, you just can't go in there and start chopping everything down for, you know, for what? Well, uh, I, I think mean, if it's a safety thing. hazard, then it's then it's then you got no no questions about it. The one case at uh, at the end of Iowa, or yeah, Iowa. You know, he's he's stating that you know parts are breaking off the tree, falling in his yard uh, frequently. So that sort of becomes a pressing issue. Well, yeah, well, yeah. What was the purpose of that? Glenn Matchaw from West Avenue, he, he complains every couple of years. He's at the end of West, Glenn Latchaw, and uh, he has the same problem, but it's also all those vines are growing on his fence, plus the trees. Um, I know with, I know he, he will attend the meeting every now and then or send an email out or a letter to the township regarding the issues that he has with the with the debris and the and the, the stuff, the vines that are growing on his fence and haven't heard from him lately, but I think John tried to clean some of that up for him at one time. Who was that, Kate? Glenn Latchaw, West yeah. Avenue. Yep. Yep. I mean, and he's got all kinds of things in the way now that you can't even, got like some gardens in there and, and so it's, going to be i mean you know we haven't heard it's from just him one lately. thing if you get a bucket truck in there and and you could you know do a do one of these straight up cuts anything that's hanging over you know but i mean you got to be able to get to it that's yeah. the problem yeah well it's not going to be a, a a quick job or an inexpensive job it's certainly going to involve a lot of a lot of resources and time uh, from your department, um, and I, I think once we get out of out of the summer and things start dying off, uh, we can start seeing a little deeper into the thicket. There, I was up there today looking at it from uh, Mr. Trimble's re uh, property, and uh, yeah, it's a real it's a problem. I mean, it's uh, you get six feet into it and you're already tangled up with stuff. So. Uh, We'll have to figure out a way for uh, to take smaller bites out of that uh, from both ends, from the street ends, Iowa West and so forth, Perkins, and just nibble at it and, and try to get uh, uh, get to the uh, the critical uh, the dead deadfalls or the trees that are going to become a problem if they're going to if it looks like there's something that's uh, uh, if we get Kevin Sevilla to take a look at something and he spots something and said hey this might drop and create a problem in an adjacent private property, then we'll probably have to take direct action on that. But um, we are, um, there, there, is, there is eight houses that there are properties butt up against. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> just so you have an idea how many yeah. houses it is. We're Anything else, John? Yeah. I'm no, sorry, Kate. That's it. Can I ask you a question? Okay. Go ahead, Chris. We're designated as a tree city, correct? Yes. So is there any money that comes with it for just general maintenance like this? Like it's great to get the, the accolades for having all the trees, but then down the road when they get older and start dying off, is there anything that we can apply for any assistance for you know, helping these <laughs> residents that are just kind of burdened by it then? I'll, I'll bring that up with shade tree. There's grants available to the shade tree commission uh, as far as for clearing or forestry management. You know, we're gonna, we'll, we'll bring it to the shade tree. I think Dr. John's on the line there. Um, Thank you. Unless it's Maryland, but our meeting is Wednesday night. Yep. All right. Now Let's it's see what, uh, if there's anything there that's, uh, that's useful to us, John. You got it. Anything else, John? John Fenimore? That's it. All right. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Mrs. Lohr, administration. Yes. Um, <clears throat> just want to remind everyone that Delanco um, does have its d uh, date for recycling pickup. And it's this Wednesday. 
So um, I will be asking uh, Bev to email blast tomorrow again to remind people to put their recycling out Tuesday night, tomorrow night. And then uh, Chief, would you be able to do something through the Nixall? Yes. Thank you. Um, if you send uh, something uh, to Danielle, she'll um, put it up on the Facebook page as well, but we'll, we'll send okay. the whole thing out. Traffic sign with the, uh, that notice on recycling was a great idea. Yeah. Well, Janice's it's, idea. I just didn't put the information. What a gentleman. So um, the thing, we want to get the word out for people to put their recycling out Tuesday night because if they don't, what they don't finish Wednesday, they will continue into Thursday. But if people put it out Wednesday night and they've already done their street Wednesday, they're not going to come back to that street. So we really want to try to get the residents to put to know to put their recycling out tomorrow night, Tuesday night. Um, and then I'll also ask Bev to put it on the, as much as we don't like posting on the Delanco Facebook residence page to, to put something there, because um, quite a few people do look at that. Um, it'll do it. <laughs> There's a lot of people that already have them out and have had them I, out since Thursday, uh, Wednesday yeah, night. They, they, yeah. yeah, they didn't so, get them um, out. Yeah. They've been out since Memorial Day. Yeah, yeah. so, um, but again, people that think, oh, well, Thursday's the right, you know, and they put it out Wednesday night, if they've already been down the street, they're not gonna come back to that street for right. Thursday when they finish up. Um, we'll talk about trash. There's a whole section later on dedicated to trash. And I just wanted to bring up uh, today, we had our, the office had their first um, report of the uh, operation and uh, apartment unit that will, um, that was owner occupied, but will now um, be used as an Airbnb. And we were looking at the regulations, uh, Kitty, Jessica, and I were looking at regulations and we don't really have anything specific to Airbnbs, which the occupants change weekly, daily. And um, this is registered online. We looked it up, it is registered. There are already people that have already rented it. So there's, um, nothing on the books that really regulates that type of change of tenant or occupancy. Uh, spoke with Doug a little bit about it. Um, as far as he says, there's a lot of case law, a lot of court cases, you can't really prohibit them, but you can regulate them to a point. We have nothing on the books that really effectively regulates an Airbnb um, and as our rental registration ordinances uh, code really don't apply because we re uh, under rental, we, ch we require a um, reinspection after every change of occupancy. Well, that's kind of going that, you know, a rental occupant will maybe change every couple of years. And then there's even longer term rental, you know, not every week. It wouldn't, it's not practical to have an inspector out there, um, you know, 52 times out of the year. So um, what I'd like to do is at our July 12th meeting, which is the next township committee meeting is July 12th. Um, Doug will be at that meeting is have that as a discussion item and he can recommend some, um, maybe some uh, language for an ordinance that would effectively regulate an, an Airbnb type of use, uh, a fee schedule, um, because it's not something, again, you don't wanna change, you don't wanna inspect it after every occupant, uh, but maybe more frequently than the once a year that's required of rental, reg uh, the rental um, units, regular type rental units. And that's what I have. So if that's okay, I'll, I'll put that on the uh, July 12th or just as a discussion item? Sure. Okay. Very good. Is, Thank you. What is the address, Janice? Uh, I didn't bring the paperwork with me. It's on Ash Street. Okay. It's it's on Ash. Um, place to vacation. Huh? Nice place to vacay. Well, you know, it's interesting. The pictures that they have where it's registered, they have a view and you can see the creek. Um, People were actually posting how nice it was. They had used it for uh, when they had come into town. Uh, you know, uh, some people used it. They were, I guess, buying a boat from one of the marinas and use that to, you know, to stay, uh, I guess, through the transaction. Um, so it, it's, you know, D Doug will talk more about it. We really can't prohibit them um, because, but there's case law, there's court cases but you can certainly regulate them. But our rental rental regulations, rental registration regulations don't cover uh, that type of constant change of um, occupancy. All right, anything else? That's it for now, thank you. And uh, we'll talk trash later in the meeting. Yeah.
Mrs. Martin, uh, planning board, anything coming up? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I received no new applications, uh, so I will be reaching out to the chairperson and the board professionals about uh, canceling the June 29 meeting, which is our July meeting. We just moved it because of the holiday. Thank you. Uh, Township Committee, uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick, you want to lead off? Sure. Um, I worked very closely with recreation to um, schedule the Memorial Day service. And it turned out to be really uh, a nice event since our parade was canceled. Um, all the groups came out and presented their uh, wreaths or tributes to those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, uh, the sewer authority, Doug Weller, uh, went to Virginia to actually view and operate the jet vac that Delanco and Beverly planned to purchase. He said it was a worthwhile trip. Um, and uh, he said it's going to be very beneficial to both towns. Um, they're still in the process of, a, of obtaining their interim financing for the major um, relining pro project. And they're still waiting for the township committee to come to an agreement with Dolan before they move forward. Um, we also had the memorial service for Freddie Weller and it was attended by approximately 50 people. The memorial plaque was unveiled and uh, the street naming Weller Way was also unveiled at that event. Very nice. Uh, I attended the dunes cleanup. Uh, 30 people registered for the day. It was an extremely hot day, um, but we managed to have uh, a great time. A uh, special thank you to Amber and Alyssa for their craft ideas and assisting the children, making bird feeders from orange halves, painting rocks, and providing um, a representative from Woodford Run Cedar Refuge with a hawk and an owl. Um, there was a lot of trash there uh, this year. So uh, John's been keeping those trails pretty clean. Uh, Rec has started the concerts. Uh, we had a great success at the first concert. I, I would say there had to be about 300 people there. The next concert is this Thursday, June 24th. Uh, the summer camp program uh, registration is still ongoing. will be held at Dobbins United Methodist Church this year. Uh, History Board continues to work on the historic designations and updating the veterans log. Uh, the seniors had a meeting Wednesday outdoors at the Field of Dreams uh, Pavilion. Uh, I was unable to attend because I did my work schedule around their meetings on Tuesday and they just changed their meetings to Wednesday. So I have to see if I can work something out with my boss to attend their meetings. Um, Gateway Park, I planted all the flower pots, the window boxes, and uh, worked on that flower bed last Sunday for three hours, um, trying to get it workable to plant the rest of the flowers there. So John and I are gonna redo that somehow so I don't have to spend so much time there. Um, I watched the fifth grade graduation, the lead graduation um, last week, and um, I've always enjoyed attending that program. They had 50 students this year, and uh, what an incredible job that um, Officer Deering and Eric uh, Sergeant Hoffman do to put that program together. The kids' speeches were excellent. Um, and I think that's about it that I have. Thank you. Very good. Covered a lot of ground. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Holland. I'm not much to report, just from our last set of reports. The Economic Advisory Council did meet, um, which was great to see everyone in person. We do have two new members um, and a whole lot of new businesses in town. So hopefully we'll have some exciting uh, events this year. Um, I, I think my first year on, on that council, they talked a lot about a, a breakfast or a luncheon for all the businesses, but it just and it never came to fruition. So um, hopefully that changes. Um, I made a quick appearance at the last concert, but uh, sadly still not uh, dog friendly. So uh, yeah, I ducked out. 
Um, and I think I have a, a library meeting coming up, but but nothing uh, nothing of note at this point. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Brown. Yes, good evening. <clears throat> uh, Chris touched on uh, Economic Advisory Commission, and it was nice to meet again. Uh, we spent a lot of time catching the two members up uh, to speed for what has gone on and transpired in town. And uh, also, Shirley, our chair, is pretty gun ho, and she really wanted to catch up with Chris and I on what's happening in the town. So we gave her insight on the Township Committee and what's been working with industrial sites. Um, so she, she seems to be uh, pumped up, you know, after the COVID layoffs. Um, and uh, the Shade Tree met uh, last month and another very good meeting. Um, <clears throat> to, um, to their credit, they managed to get 45 trees into the ground uh, through the Shade Tree Federation. And uh, I personally sent <clears throat> Bill Matalevich a, a nice little email letter and I congratulated him and uh, told him I was impressed. And even though I've been his, uh, his uh, biggest critic, I was very impressed with how he pulled this off. And to get 45 trees in the ground really benefits Delanco when you see the street. So right now we're tweaking them. We got one dead one. Um, you know, one has a little blight. So this Wednesday when we meet, we'll try to figure it out. People are already asking for new trees. So hopefully uh, they'll get put on the list for, for next year. I don't think any more should go in uh, this year um, only because of the heat and so forth. But all is good. And I was wondering, I don't want to just like throw this out here. I think I need it for a refresher, but maybe next meeting, if we could put on as a discussion item where we stand with the Fisher Canvas building. I think uh, during the budget process, you know, everybody just put put a lot of things on hold and, uh, you know, Harry will be there next time. Uh, just to, so we can have like a little review party on Fisher Canvas. Okay. And that's all I have. Good idea. Uh yeah, that was a very nice uh, letter that you sent an email to uh, to Bill. That's classy. Um, nice job, John. Thank you. Uh, Fern, Mr. Arlette. Yes, hi. Uh, let's see, I did attend the, uh, or a portion of the West Ave cleanup. Uh, I couldn't stay for the whole thing, but uh, it looked like the residents or the folks uh, along with John and Public Works, who use the uh, the trails up there, are very respectful of the area of what I could see. Uh, I think uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick said that there wasn't a lot of trash, and I didn't see a lot of trash uh, in the period of time that I was up there. Uh, we had a number of bags with the group that we had, and I don't, I'm not even sure we filled up a full bag or that they filled up a full bag when I had, uh, when I was leaving. So uh, I, I think that's a, a great statement, again, for the respect that folks are showing to the trails up in that area. Uh, and then attended the uh, memorial for Fred Weller and that was well attended and uh, Bob Loudon from Beverly who's on the sewage authority uh, for Beverly, uh, had some nice words uh, to share about Fred Weller and uh, his legacy. Uh, you know, uh, it's great that both of Fred's children are here to, uh, to take care of the sewer plant, one from an engineering standpoint and one with hands-on and uh, overseeing uh, the sewer plant and the operation over there. Uh, also uh, got to listen in on a uh, some seminars uh, with development in the state. Uh, and uh, there was one uh, presentation about uh, two homes, one roof. And in there it talked about uh, there seems to be a uh, a migration to having, uh, I guess, uh, in-law suites or places where uh, senior citizens can stay with their families. Uh, and uh, there seems to be 
uh, of movement going on with that. And I know we've talked about going the reverse of uh, trying to get rid of some of the apartments and some of the dwellings uh, and convert them back to uh, single houses. So there's, I'm sure, a balance in there that uh, needs to take place. But there's, again, there seems to be uh, this need uh, in society to try and make that happen as far as, uh, again, having seniors living with their families or staying in their, their homes. Uh, and then they went into the, there was also a presentation about the economics of New Jersey and how many folks are moving out and again, talk about taxes, et cetera. Uh, so some of the presentations were quite interesting. Uh, I also have access to the ones that I wasn't able to uh, participate in or listen in on. And I have uh, another month that I can go back and listen in on. Uh, were, were, were they through the League of Municipalities for those seminars? Uh, no, they weren't. Uh, they actually came through uh, through some information, I think, through the Joint Lane Use Board, and it had to do with development. So uh, there was a fee to sign on, but the topics really caught my interest, and uh, I wanted to get in on some of them. Uh, let's see. And then as for other things, probably the biggest thing that uh, I was able to wade in on and sort of help out with uh, was our trash situation. And once we get to that topic, uh, I'll throw a few more uh, of my two cents in on that. And that's all I have for the moment. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you and uh, Mrs. Lohr and the office staff, uh, uh, Beverly Russell, but uh, Fern, you're, you're uh, you, you termed it correctly, wading in on the trash situation. Uh, uh, from what I've heard, uh, you you kind of got your got into it with a little gusto there. So uh, appreciate you keeping on that and uh, your contacts with uh, the trash contractor and the principals there to uh, give them a nudge to uh, get some action in our direction here. So we'll be monitoring that this week with. Uh, our neighboring towns, Edgewater and Beverly, whose pickups uh, start tomorrow and, and uh, Wednesday. So we'll see how that goes uh, next door as far as our, uh, hopefully our, we haven't heard anything different that our pickup on Thursday uh, is still on schedule. So uh, let's see, um, some of the things that were mentioned, uh, uh, I, I caught the very beginning of the, uh, of the dunes cleanup uh, and then I was uh, out, of, uh, out of state for uh, nearly a week or so down uh, uh, for my annual uh, refresher classes and recertification and so forth. So I missed, missed uh, several events, uh, the dunes cleanup, uh, the Weller Way dedication and so forth. Um, I would like to echo uh, uh, Kate's comments on the uh, Memorial Day uh, the ceremony at Gateway was, uh, I thought, one of the, the nicest and most respectful that we've had in several years. It was a nice uh, uh, quiet, somber event. And uh, um, I think uh, the overcast skies kind of added to it and, and uh, the road noise uh, didn't interrupt things uh, as it has in, in past years. So um, it, was, it was a nice, respectful uh, Memorial Day. Uh, let's see, uh, just some things, that, uh, the two items that were passed on to me. Uh, uh, friends in town, there was a, um, uh, let's see, what was it? Someone that, that uh, I guess some comments on, on uh, from our last meeting on the, uh, on the cannabis uh, uh, ordinance, that it was a, uh, uh, like a standard form or uh, uh, a boilerplate from uh, the League of Municipalities and so forth. And uh, uh, it seemed that uh, I, I kind of he heard that and thought that was, um, Look, somewhat of uh, uninformed uh, uh, comment that uh, a lot of the, the the ordinances and resolutions that we get are are are, are um, model ordinances. They're already ninety percent complete, 
and we get those and uh, review them and see what applies to Delanco and how appropriate it is and uh, fill in the blanks or revise it. Um, and it's, uh, it's a huge time saver for the municipal staff. Um, and if it gets into something that's a, a legal item, that it's something that's already um, been through a, uh, a proofing and, and validation, uh, and that saves time on our solicitor, it saves time and money. And so uh, um, I, I thought that was a little bit of uh, misinformation that was, that was ricocheting around uh, that uh, uh, the comments were made about that. And the other thing in the same vein uh, on, the on the cannabis that, uh, uh, it, uh, that we reacted too quickly in, in, in uh, that opt out ordinance. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, that was something as, as we've said several times and is uh, hopefully clearly explained on the municipal website and it's uh, available in many search uh, uh, search engines looking around because uh, it's in this, uh, this consideration is in progress across the state um, as far as meeting the August 22nd uh, deadline um, is that uh, this, there's too many uncertainties out there. And this really gives us, it's a zoning issue, but there's too many, uh, too many things that we don't know about this and how this is gonna look and how this is gonna uh, affect uh, our community and other communities. Um, and there's been several instances uh, in the time that I've been uh, on the, on the uh, governing body and before that where um, uh, things have uh, started moving towards approval or been approved and uh, after we got into it or after we learned a little more, uh, decided that that wasn't a good thing. And that was something that uh, we didn't want in town. Um, the uh, Capital Academy episode with the Zerberg Mansion was something that uh, it sounded good and sometimes uh, uh, a property owner or prospective uh, business or uh, um, applicant uh, is not, usually not too forthright or not as forthright as you'd like in explaining what they're gonna do. And uh, uh, it took uh, some inquiries and uh, some digging by some residents and some members of the governing body at that time to dig into that and find that, peel back the onion and find out uh, what was going on there. So if uh, um, another instance was a, a business wanted to, uh, uh, was seeking a permit to open up a, a, or a concrete recycling um, on a piece of property. And uh, we got looking at, into that and uh, found that there were some uh, significant errors in their application to DEP and that uh, prompted DEP to uh, um, make some additional inquiries on some other environmental issues on that same property. And uh, that didn't, you know, the, obviously the concrete crush, crushing facility didn't, uh, um, is not in town. So it's things like that where, where it's, 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 it's not, uh, we're not here to give out candy. I mean, it's, you need to take some time and do the research and find out what the long range impacts are. Uh, for most of May, I was out in Arizona attending, uh, my father had some medical issues that uh, he was dealing with and uh, uh, Arizona is a, a legal state for cannabis and so forth and um, the trips back and forth to uh, appointments in the hospitals, uh, passed by several uh, uh, retail outlets and so forth. And the thing that kind of caught my eye was they all had armed um, private security outside these, these businesses. and. Uh, uh, you know, the, several people mentioned that, uh, was it 63, 66% of the state, you know, voted uh, to approve cannabis and legalization and so forth. But uh, is that, uh, uh, those numbers, uh, those uh, levels of approval still apply to a commercial property that's across the street from your school or next door to your, your home? And so, these are the things that uh, we want to take the time on. We want to go into it with our eyes open and uh, um, short sighted uh, talk of uh, uh, without considering the, the, the details and the depth and really learning about what, uh, what the impacts are as, as much as you can find out at a given time or in a given period. Um, that's what our job is. 
And so you can't, uh, once you get into it, uh, an oops is really expensive and uh, damaging to a community. So anyway, uh, let's move it on. Consent agenda items. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted with a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Is there any item that any uh, committee member would like uh, pulled out for separate consideration or discussion? I do have one uh, change. Uh, for resolution number uh, 87, the re resolution to create the uh, plan endorsement citizens advisory committee to add uh, an additional name of uh, Mr. Tom Finan to that list. Is that permissible to do it in that format, Mrs. Lohr? Yes, you can uh, recommend an addition of uh, Tom Finan and then um, the vote would uh, for that resolution would include his name also. So we can do it all together on the consent. We don't, we don't yeah. have to pull it out separately, mm -hmm. correct? No, no, you've made the notation now. That's fine. What did you want to put him on? John what was that, John? What, what did you want to put him on? Uh, it's the, it's resolution number uh, 87. Number 87. Uh, create a plan endorsement citizens advisory committee. This was a, uh, um, <sighs> Department of State Office of Planning Advocacy uh, in Trenton uh, has, uh, we need to do a plan reendorsement of a plan that was done in 1999 by the 12 river communities. Um, and we received uh, initial notice on this, uh, I think a year ago, just as COVID was breaking and then it got put on the shelf. And then early this year, um, and it's being uh, kind of flowing through the Bridge Commission. Tom Stanley kind of uh, down at the Bridge Commission, uh, one of the planners down there is uh, kind of shepherding uh, us and 11 other towns on this project. And it's uh, a somewhat cumbersome and involved project. Um, there's a basically a master plan for the 12 uh, Route 130 Delaware River corridor communities. Um, and uh, one of the components of that is to have a citizens advisory committee um, and it specifies uh, a governing body member, a class four member of the uh, planning board and so forth. Um, anyway, I put out, uh, sent out a, an email to all the boards and commissions in town back in uh, March 4th. And uh, at that time received one reply. And uh, anyway, for about every month and a half or so, I would repeat the email and, and finally got uh, um, got all the slots filled from uh, volunteers from the uh, planning board, school board, uh, and the various other boards and commissions in, in the town. So that's that's what you see in in uh, resolution 87. And the idea is um, uh, Mrs. Martin and I have been going through the 180 page master plan and uh, that was uh, put together by. Um, Mr. Stanley Kynes down at the Bridge Commission. And uh, it's 90, 95%, got some good data. Some of it's a little dated uh, based on census and, and, and some other, but uh, Mrs. Martin and I have been going through it and uh, uh, making some corrections and adding some things, the new development out on the Enterprise Drive and uh, the Horton uh, project uh, at the crossings and so forth. And, uh, cleaning up some things there and, and polishing up uh, the parts that apply to Delanco. Uh, what will happen is that we'll all get uh, sent uh, down to the Bridge Commission. That'll come back to that advisory committee and they'll review it uh, again. We're just trying to get the, the rough spots off of it and get sharpen up some of the accuracy of the data and rather than uh, suck up too much of their time. So it's anticipated that uh, this group will have probably one or two or three uh, informal meetings later in the summer. And then this process bounces back. Uh, governing body has to do a, um, uh, an approval pro 
and then it goes up to the bridge and then on up to the state. Uh, the clock on this uh, is still in the suspended animation. It doesn't start until 100. It's due 180 days after the state of emergency is uh, rescinded. So that's where we are on that. Okay. Thank you for the explanation. All right, resolution uh, 2021 82, resolution of the committee of the Township of Delanco County, Burlington, New Jersey, authorizing the appointment of police officer in attendance at the Gloucester County Police Academy. Resolution 83, cancellation of unexpended reserve balance for revaluation. Resolution 84, resolution authorizing employment contract with the Lanco Department of Public Works, CWA bargaining unit. Uh, resolution 85, uh, resolution authorizing the execution of contract renewal membership in the Burlington County Municipal Joint Insurance Fund. Uh, resolution 86, resolution certifying liens against certain properties for costs incurred by the township in accordance with Chapter 135 of the Township Code. Resolution 87, resolution to create the Plan Endorsement Citizens Advisory Committee. Payment of bills, current fund $34,932.08. Payroll $40,675.57. Capital fund $15,000 even. Escrow trust $8,229 even. Municipal open space $5,140.60. Approval of business license 21-43 through-46. The approval of the consent agenda motion, please. So moved. Motion by Mr. Allette, second. Second. Okay, Fitzpatrick, roll call please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. All right, yes. You said yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mr. Allette. Yes. And Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, meetings now open to the public for comment. This is session two. Once again, state your name and address. And uh, Mrs. Laura, anything in the chat or not comments? at this? No, not at this time. Anyone wishing to speak, please unmute and so say. You have a hand up from Matt Bartlett. Okay. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, Committee. Uh, just a couple things. Um, I was going to bring up the fact that. Um, I was out over the weekend driving on the back road in Cooperstown Road, and I saw Ryan Holmes had some signs posted right next to the D.R. Horton signs um, advertising their five-year tax abatement for their development, their building in Del Ran on, uh, I think it's Hartford Road, Fox Trail or something like that. And I was going to say how incredibly inappropriate it is while D.R. Horton's trying to sell out their development. Uh, someone from another town is coming in here posting them, but I happened to be going out to Tawawa this morning and noticed that they were gone. So I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, someone from the township, whether it's code enforcement or someone uh, remove them because it's you know just not right for a developer who's trying to build something in our town right now. Um, well, thank you for that. Also, Janice, thank you for uh, fixing the, the ordinance section on the website. They're now easy to find. Like we talked about last week's meeting, so I greatly appreciate that. Um, and then finally, on um, Mr. Templeton's point about the there's misinformation about the cannabis ordinance being just a boilerplate uh, ordinance from the league. Uh, um, looking at our ordinance that we adopted and, and the uh, boilerplate one from the league, and with the exception of one paragraph out of the 15, it's literally the same ordinance that the league provides. And I get that it's great that it saves us legal fees, which I greatly appreciate 100%. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't directly capture anything that see says same. anything about our town. You know, it, it has obviously it has Delanco's name in there, but it doesn't say the fact that the majority of our voters approve this, that the majority of the residents um, who attended these meetings spoke in favor of it. It just says that the town, you know, we're uh, opting out. So the fact that it's you're saying it's misinformation, it's not it's misinformation. It's you know literally one out of fifteen paragraphs we changed in the draft ordinance. Um, I am happy to see that the subcommittee formation that I brought up last week um, is on the agenda tonight. So uh, Kate, thank you for uh, mentioning that at last week's meeting and 
you know, trying to push this issue that we should have had uh, something going on for the last, I guess, four months since it's been legal in the state of New Jersey. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Any other comments from the public? Yes. Mr. Mayor. Yes. State your name, please. John Paye, 101 Delview Lane. Good evening. What's on your mind? Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank the, the committee for its due, del due diligence and all its hard work and all the issues that they need to address. Uh, I know it's very challenging. Um, but I'm just making a premature comment about the Airbnb. I know Collingswood has had a lot of issues with, with Airbnbs. Um, I'd be worried about somebody just purchasing a property to turn it into a, an Airbnb. I also would be concerned about um, even a, a homeowner having an Airbnb and it um, becoming a uh, revolving door of uh, comings and goings. Um, anyway, I know it's to be addressed, but listening to uh, uh, Mrs. Lohr bring the subject up while I was here, I thought I'd just make a comment. So that's all, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, that'll, um, yeah, we'll definitely be doing some dating on that. Any other comments from the public? Um, yes, Hearings. this is, hi, this Go is ahead. Catherine Gersuch Um I'm actually speaking on behalf of the school board. Oh, good so, evening. Hi, how are you? Um, I just wanted to let the township committee know that our business administrator, Victoria LaSalle has resigned and we will have a new business administrator starting on July 1st. And um, he'll be reaching out to you. Um, we would hope to take this opportunity to uh, take some steps to improve our relationship with the township committee and our communication. So I hope uh, on your end, you'll be willing to do the same. Do you have a name on your uh, incoming uh, BA? Um, it's not uh, fully, uh, on paper yet. So as soon as we have it, we will share that information. Um, and um, he will be reaching out. All right, very good, appreciate it. So and that would be we'll July be 1st. Sorry, continue. Very good, thank mm -hmm. you. Any other comments from the public? All right, hearing and seeing. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Uh, the school board has a meeting, uh, school board meeting on this Wednesday evening. Uh, they're supposed to start at 6 p.m. And they're going to go into executive and then start their regular meeting uh, right around 7. Uh, but that was a change in uh, their approach to, I guess, the meeting for this month, uh, where they'll open their meeting at 6, then go right into executive come out of the executive and they said right around seven o'clock to start their, their normal business uh, public meeting. This is a special meeting uh, to evaluate our CSA. So we do that at the, the beginning of the meeting in executive session because we're talking about personnel issues. Not, not a standard meeting format moving forward. <laughs> Thank you for that, uh, that note, appreciate it. Uh, let's see, status of coronavirus disease, COVID-19 and executive orders, executive order update and review of uh, current COVID response policies at the municipal building. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Allette and Mrs. Lohr have been handling this for the last uh, 15 months or so. So where are we and what's next? Well, we started out, uh or over the last few months, uh, we hadn't changed any of the policies, again, following the CDC uh, guidelines. Uh, and we're to the point now of looking at having uh, the employees on the administrative side, uh, not having to wear face masks uh, in the working area uh, as long as they've had their, uh, their vaccinations. Uh, Mrs. Lord, like chiming in. Yeah, <clears throat> yes. Um, 
our pol our COVID policy basically, for the most part, follows CDC guidelines, um, except for the masking. Our policy does require, if you're in the building, um, that you have a mask on, regardless of if you're in a public area, employee area, vaccinated or unvaccinated. The current policy says you have a mask on. The only place you don't have a mask is if you're in your own personal workspace. So, um, you know, we are looking to relax that policy, ask the committee to relax that policy um, to allow the employees that have been vaccinated that if they do not want to wear a mask, uh, they do not have to. The area that's a little bit more um, difficult to decide would be the general um, public area where people are coming into the lobby area for, for meetings when uh, there are groups that are uh, coming back to use the courtroom uh, to continue to have people to um, be masks, be masked or mask optional. Um, I just heard a, you know, a report today from a leading um, a scientist doctor in this area that said, we're not out of the woods yet. We have that Delta variant um, and depending on, you know, uh, how things go, uh, we, we may not be out of the woods with, with the COVID yet. So it's, it's, a diff it's difficult to say, it's, it's a very difficult decision. Um, and I think what Fern said would, would be to maybe um, if you are vaccinated uh, employee and you're an employee area and you are vaccinated that you do not have to wear a mask. Um, and those that are not vaccinated when they're outside of their own personal workspace, they have to continue to wear a mask. And that's, that's the recommendation coming um, from, from Fern and I on this. And uh, Jesse, you're on the team. Uh, Kitty, you're on the team. Um, Bev, if you're on, you're on the team. If you have any recommendations, um, observances that you'd like to add, this, you know, that would, it would be appreciated. Because um, I think, yeah, Kitty, the chief and Bev, they were on the COVID response team um, for that. So uh, if they have any recommendations, um, we'd like to hear them. Want me to go first, Kitty? Go ahead, Chief. Sure. I, uh, I, I think uh, we should open things up to what's been suggested. Uh, my personal opinion is we probably could go a little further, but that uh, we'll do some due caution and then just practice in public areas. And if you um, want a mandate for non-vaccinated employees, that's uh, that's up to the committee. Um, so I'm uh, I'm okay, but I, I think the current policy needs to change. Uh, I don't think it's realistic to be masked up all the time indoors when you've been vaccinated. Chief, I have a question uh, from the public coming into uh, into the building for police matters. Uh, where have we stood on that? Where they still they would still have to be masked or? Again, I'm looking from a safety standpoint for uh, the yes, uh, when we when we invite the public in to to address whatever issue they have, um, we're wearing masks. They're wearing masks. Um, number one, because that's what the current policy is. Uh, number two, my policy will reflect the township policy, so there's no um, there's no confusion. So you know, as we move forward. I have tried to keep the police department's policy uh, in conjunction with the township policy. So there isn't uh, two different things. Um, I know we're talking indoors and uh, you know, the administrative side doesn't deal with the outdoors, but my police policy will, will say that masks are optional when, uh, when communicating or having contact with the public outside. Thank you. This is Martin, do you have anything to add there or your thoughts? Um, no, I agree with the recommendation. I agree with what Mr. Olet and Mrs. Lohr are recommending for the uh, office staff. 
Any comments from committee? I was bumped off the internet. Uh, I hope this is about, uh, are we getting back in the building? Because I'm getting tired of getting kicked off uh, of this Zoom meeting. And uh, I don't wear a mask anymore, uh, anywhere I go. I, I'm, I'm not into, I'll do it out of respect for anybody who feels, um, you know, a little bit, um, they want protection, but uh, I'm, I'm not masking. My store people don't mask anymore. I actually tell them to take it off. I can't hear them. I, I've had it. <laughs> Is that what we're talking about? Because I missed about five minutes of the meeting with this storm. John, we're just actually on the mask part of it. Um, okay. The committee has not discussed about, you know, uh, staying on Zoom versus returning to the municipal building for the meetings. We're just talking about the indoor mask policy for the municipal building. Okay. I'm not no, a big fan. You know, you can get it through your eyeballs. That's a mucous membrane, um, you know, right down into your uh, sinuses, into your lungs. Um, hopefully everybody got vaccinated and, uh, things are going to get better. Uh, I'm in agreement on, on those next steps, uh, as you outlined there. So, uh, and as always, we're flexible and whatever directives come down or if things go back the other, the good way or the bad way, uh, we'll adapt to it. So, uh, if everyone's in agreement, uh, do you need a, no, if of, every, no, if everyone's in agreement, I'll go ahead and amend the language in the policy to reflect the new mask policy and then um, present that at the next meeting. Okay. Everyone Ms. okay with that? Ms. Slur, we're still a month away for our next meeting. I'm not sure we want to wait that long. No, I'll, I'll go ahead and issue it. You know, I'll, I'll make the change and then issue the new policy, the policy amendment to um, all the employees. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, um, so that will be in place after tonight. Do you, Thank do you, you. Just, just, just recite what it is because I missed it. Um, the mask policy is, will be amended so that employees um, that have received the COVID vaccination um, do not have to wear a mask in the municipal building. Um, those that have not received the uh, employees who have not received COVID vaccination um, will have to continue to wear masks uh, unless they are in their own personal workspace. But if they leave that workspace um, to go anywhere else in the building, um, they would have to put a mask on. And general public? The ge well, well, right now, tonight, I don't believe there's going to be a change. The general public entering the building will be required to wear a mask that because that wasn't addressed unless you want to change that but we have no way of monitoring who's vaccinated who is not coming into the building uh, from the general public the employees we can we can monitor that and that was my concern with uh in asking the chief as far as the public coming in to, to use the municipal building you know how do you uh ensure that they've been vaccinated uh, before coming in. And most people, to my knowledge, if they're coming in there and they're uh, dealing with an emergency or uh, a critical type of situation, uh, mask may be the, the last thing that's on their minds. But if we keep that uh, policy in place for the public coming into the building, uh, at least there's a a sense of protection that we're doing the right thing uh, with the public area. Uh, and then as the CDC and things change over the next month, again, we can adjust. I, I, th I think uh, Janice, didn't Doug indicate that perhaps for that area, it should be a suggestion and not a policy mandate that uh, we encourage mask wearing, particularly for those who have not been vaccinated because it's not an enforceable item anyhow uh, out in that public area. Yes, and Doug did recommend that for the public area that we, uh, instead of mandating it, and there's no way we can enforce and check who's vaccinated, who's not vaccinated, uh, it, that 
you know, masks are, you know, encouraged or recommended for those that are members of the public that are not vaccinated, which is a, which is a significant change to our policy, but that's what Doug recommends. That's what I would recommend. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Yes. Let's go with that, that it's uh, <clears throat> a suggestion uh, for as far as uh, public access to the, uh, the front atrium and so forth. That and a, frankly, other meetings in the in the meeting room too. That would apply to the meeting room. Yes. Correct. So it just it's it's a honor system, and whatever people are comfortable. If they're not comfortable being there because people are not wearing masks, then I guess they'll we'll hear back from them. But <clears throat> and are we still going to do the daily check thing? No, I don't think that's necessary at all. Okay, thank you. We can actually, um, I can amend the policy to- Yeah, I forgot that. about that. I think CDC took that away last month, the requirement for that daily check on the temperature check. I forgot about that, yes. Okay, we'll, start, we'll um, delete that out. All right. Yeah, so the only restriction is the you know, non-vaccinated employees and the uh, request encouragement for non-vaccinated public to wear masks. Those, that's the, really the only rules that are left. So we just need to put a sign or change our sign on the door. That... Correct. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to, a lot of signage to chain, change. The other um, CDC recommendation that's uh, that we follow is um, particularly now with vacation season starting, we do have employees that will be traveling out of state, traveling out of country. Uh, for vacationing, and we still want to follow those CDC uh, recommendations uh, for quarantining when they come back, particularly for those traveling out of country, um, because there are still many countries that are have yeah. a lot of COVID going on. So we, and our policy reflects following CDC guidelines. So some uh, some uh, employees. Uh, we'll still need to have a, a COVID test when they come back, particularly if they've been out of country, if they have symptoms, if, if um, they've been exposed, we still want to follow those CDC guidelines um, for, for, for travel. Right, those do stay, you're right. Those symptoms are exposed, correct. Yeah. Positive testing. Yeah. It's been so long, okay. Yeah, so Janice put that together and then it'll be codified retroactively at your next meeting. By then the rules may be changed and maybe talk about something else altogether. But I'll go ahead and issue these changes um, with a memo to all the employees. Um, and then, um, you know, we'll see at the next meeting what if there's anything different from the yeah. CDC okay. or executive orders. And, yeah. All right. Now you can talk about your meeting. All right. Any uh, any last questions there on that on on the policy? All right. And uh, do we want to talk about uh, going forward with the meetings here? Yeah. I think it's fine. What are the the ground rules? Uh, I guess a month ago we it it. Well, I don't want to confuse the issue. What what are the ground rules now? Can we? If we go back into the meeting room, uh, are we required to maintain a, a Zoom type? Uh, uh, no. No, yeah. no, I think what Doug has indicated is you can continue on Zoom as we're doing, or you can meet and have the same masking requirement or lack of requirement, frankly, in your meeting room. The hybrid is the, which we can't do physically yet, but that would be the one with the biggest difficulty we'd have to work on, but it's one or the other. The issue that Janice and I have talked about, and we mentioned is consistency with the public, which one you're going. And if you do decide to go off of Zoom and you get people saying, gee, we'd like to also have Zoom, how do you handle that? If you stay on Zoom, how do you handle things like public presentations, uh, those kinds of issues? So there's practical, practical matters uh, of meeting inside versus on Zoom. And some people think that the Zoom meetings are better. 
they have better yeah, but able to communicate listen, with each other versus the other. So your choices. I was I was actually a fan of it. I even came out and spoke in favor of Zoom, but what just happened to me, I got kicked off. I was listening to Dr. John Paye about, uh, and, it, and I got cut off and it took me some time to get back on. So I think we're opening ourselves up to some problems. If I'm a member of the public and I got, I got a gripe to uh, do and I get cut off and can't come back on and my, my case isn't heard, that's, that's really not fair. So, you, you know, it, it, this electronic system isn't ready yet. Think- Why did I get kicked off? Five minutes. Yeah. What? By the way, you, what you pointed out is more relevant to the Joint Land Use Board than any other meeting because, yes, you use word case. If someone's actually testifying, uh, that's a semi-quasi uh, legal uh, judicial proceeding. Whereas if someone is quote simply giving their opinion on a public hearing, that would be the only thing that's similar if they can't get back on and make their comment in a public hearing. Uh, beyond that, from a legal standpoint, just from my experience it probably doesn't make a difference. You could though, your issue is as a governing body member, you're in the middle of a vote and uh, you can't finish the vote. So there's those those issues sometimes run into that in-house too. Yeah. But uh, you know, the positive is more people can be watching and participating. When things go right, maybe the Zoom is the better version, but things have more chance of going wrong. So it's really your, according to Doug, you decide one way or another. The issue that I would suggest is consistency. If you're doing it one way, people expect, you know, to switch this week, you're doing it this way. Next week, you're doing it next month or this way. The back and forth may be the bigger issue. And it may be that you wait a little bit longer till the Delta is under control, perhaps. And uh, just to make sure that you won't have to switch back and forth again. But that's... Uh, that's really your your feelings, your constituencies. Doug did make clear that um, under the Open Public Meetings Act, um, the in person is perfectly legal. The Zoom is um, the virtual meeting is perfectly legal, even without COVID executive orders. Um, so it's just your preference, your choice, what you how you want to meet. I will say that. Um, our room acoustically, as well as uh, electronic equipment is not set up to do a hybrid. We did try it, everyone um, has those memories. And where you can get into real legal problem is with a hybrid, uh, particularly with land use in that quasi quasi judicial proceeding. And we're just uh, not there acoustically and electronically to offer a hybrid um, meeting platform. When is that work supposed to potentially get done? We budgeted well, it depends on what you want. We budgeted, we put aside money. We don't, we've got some proposals on improving the acoustics. Just as we talked last week about capital items, they're put aside there. Now we've got to work on the nitty gritty and you decide do you want to go ahead and either award bids and actually do it you want to get more information? Do we have to get someone to write bids and specs? Uh, just like anything else, that's why it's in capital. It could take a while because you have to get involved in all that. And yeah, I mean, it seems like this has been such a great opportunity for our community to be involved. Um, you know, while we're all remote and kind of focused on on township business. It, it would be such a shame to lose that opportunity for people to come in and weigh in on their thoughts. Um, so if that if that work could be kind of brought to the forefront and we could do something about the acoustics, do something about our recording and uh, recording technology and, and make this happen sooner, um, I would say stay on Zoom until we can be in public and have a successful hybrid meeting. And you know your your, your audio is breaking up, Chris. You you, you broke up. Yeah, that's a bad example. So <laughs> <laughs> much for that. And yeah. everything that you've reported, you've been breaking up tonight. <laughs> I, I would like to make a comment. Recreation has continued to meet at the township um, municipal building in the courtroom, and once we go back there, those plastic or plexiglass partitions are difficult for sound. It's very Absolutely. hard to hear who's speaking. 
So that would have to change. Um, they, they should come down because um, it's very hard to hear us one another talking at the rec meetings. But we've met there the entire time. I think maybe maybe they had one Zoom meeting. And uh, we've had a couple people come to our meetings. Well, just to, if, if, if this is the Township Committee's decision, if you would like to upgrade this room, just the acoustical quote that we, re we got, and that was a while ago, uh, to do it correctly, just the acoustics part was over $27,000. I well, mean, this, we this, this, this is, yeah, this is not an inexpensive, um, you know, uh, project. Well, it's, it's in the bond, I thought. We just passed a bond ordinance, Richard, that yeah. covers the acoustic. Right. So let's do it. That's, that's, if that's if the majority for... of you want us to do it, we will do it. Well, why did we pass the bond if we weren't going to do it? Don't we have to get yes, it's, it's not going to happen next week. It's not going to happen probably in six months, but it's one of these things we're going to have to solicit uh, uh, the, you know, some expertise, both on the electronic side that uh, we can uh, uh, offer a, a remote uh, access for, for the public to come in and, and hear us. And we also have to tackle this structural problem of, of the acoustics in the room. Uh, whether that's the same person or business or whether that's going to be two or three different contractors uh, that probably have to work together to, uh, to, to make that uh, match up. Uh, but it's, this is going to be a uh, uh, somewhat complicated. Right. But if you want to direct us, if that's where you want to go, that's, if the money wasn't there and you wanted us to do that, we'd say, well, gee, we can't do it till next year. Well, so put the money there. And if this is, Things may have changed since we introduced it. If you want us to go there, absolutely. Tell us that's what you're, what you want. You want us to do that, then we got to get multiple new. We got to update the quotes on the acoustics. We got to get multiple quotes. Determine we may have to go out for sealed bids, and in the meantime, find out how to handle the other stuff. If that's the direction you want to go, just give us that direction. That's the I, purpose of this item on the agenda. I, I think we got to get open. I think we need to add a room. Uh, we got to meet in public. Um, if you, if you watch the 76ers playoff games in the last couple of days, there's 15,000 fans with no masks, okay? <laughs> Just, you know, going crazy, yelling, screaming. Everywhere I go, there's no mask. My gym, they took the plexiglass down. Uh, there, You don't have to wear a mask anymore, and that's been a few weeks. They don't take the temperature. Why are we, why are we delaying this? Why do we have to spend $27,000 to have our next meeting in the in the in the conference room. Now, this is for this is for a hybrid approach. We never had hybrid when it started. Okay, we can take our time with hybrid. I don't want to just throw it at the first vendor that comes along because I guarantee you, okay. it's going to be a very touchy job with that big big meeting room. But some expert will have to sort of do what we want. It's going to take time to get the right contractor uh, to do this. I don't know if you intend on doing it with microphone video or if you're putting sound baffles in somewhere. But I really think for now, we, we got to get back into the meeting room environment. And if the public's cut off a of Zoom, so, so be it. They're going to have to get up and come out to a meeting, OK? Just like it was in the 1700s, OK? That's all. But I can the, get cut off every morning. Every meeting, I'm getting cut off losing my internet. Just to that, like, yeah, the first thing we have to tackle with the room, and we did have an appointment, but it had to be canceled, postponed. And we, the first people to meet with is, uh, is the um, court system, the uh, gentleman from the uh, state administrative office of the courts. Because no matter what we do in there, he's got to meet the uh, state court guidelines. So that's the first step um, that uh, we, we are taking, uh, addressing the courtroom. Okay. Can we get, get the ball rolling and look at possibly a September opening of uh, having our meetings in there? Uh, and I hate to lose the public that comes on to Zoom because we get, we get so much more participation when we're back in the, in the, uh, in the courtroom, you know, some nights there's only one or two people there, you know, other nights when we have special presentations, yes, we get lots of folks there, 
input uh, with the Zoom, we definitely have uh, more participation and uh, we're recorded. Folks can listen at their leisure and hear what's going on uh, in, in the community or in town, what we're doing. Uh, so to me, the Zoom has a lot of positives, but to be able to do both from the courtroom, you know, if we get the ball rolling, we get the acoustics and get the mechanics uh, so we can get to that point. Uh, it won't, that, won't, that won't be September. I guess be September. Right? Well, but I think we ought to start the ball rolling. I don't think we need to wait another month or two or three to start that ball rolling. I don't know why we don't do it now. Start the ball rolling. I agree. Start get... the ball rolling and, uh, you know, we, we set a date. Uh, uh, I'm being selfish here, too, a little bit. Uh, you know, summertime, uh, you know, it's nice out. We're able to do this and uh, you know, whether you're, we're in the state or we're on vacation, we're still able to do the, the town's business through the Zoom. Uh, so uh, that's, that's a, a, a selfish note on my part, but I get it out there anyways. It's not perfect, though, Vern. It's not perfect. It's, it's not perfect. This you're right. Let's uh, work with Jen and, and get the, uh, the court uh, uh, technical people and see what, uh, find out what those requirements are. You know, it's a shame. I'd like to, like, but, I'd like uh, to give Richard the authority to move forward with uh, whatever hang, they hang need on. to do. Uh, you Janice, you're the uh, scout for all these people who does, uh, what? Who does what? YouTube videos and uh, a little band member with microphones. You could probably do what we need to do for a lot less than $27,000. I mean, uh, kids are doing Instagram videos. They do stuff with videos I never saw before. So. You know, I don't. Let's not overthink not this. Far. Let's get back into our meeting in, environment and then look for the right contractor. Okay, hang, hang, I'm out. The other. Uh, Mrs. Lore, for for a notice to get back in the public, you would have to re-notice that for what? Yeah. Yes. If the committee decides that you wanted to move the meetings back into the in-person at the municipal building, I'd have to uh, publish a new meeting notice. And that's 14 days lead? No, no. Um, Probably five or 10. No, it's a, it would be a 48 hour notice okay. All right. prior to the start of the meeting. Right. That's so, the legal notice. That's legal versus what you want to get out to your residents. Yeah, One's no. technically legal, and the other is how you want your residents to find out where you are. Um, I'm just, I'm just, you know, how, how quickly, you know, if we decide to go in, in person, what I was thinking, I, I like, I like having the, you know, that we've got a wide, wider audience or wider knowledge out in the community. Uh, but there are moments, uh, presentations, uh, like the GIF presentation uh, last week, or uh, an award or uh, uh, a citation that, uh, and you'd like, you know, to do that in person, that, uh, that we that we can do that and uh you know maybe uh, have alternating a, a, a zoom meeting as the second meeting of the month and have the in-person meeting as the first meeting of the month in, in the room i don't know if that's ping-ponging back and forth too much uh, but uh, uh if if the committee wants to try it uh, i don't know if we want to do it for july or august um well, and July is only one meeting. August is one and a second if you need it. You want to get, aim for an in-person meeting in, in August? Back in the room, John? Yeah. Anyone else? I just want to start moving forward to have a meeting, but do it right, because if those Partitions are still there. You can't hear. I can't yeah, hear. Yeah, we would have to get rid of. We'd have to get rid of the partitions and make the room look like it was before. Right. Yeah, that that's clear. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. You can't meet. Yeah, the way. Be back to the way it was before. If you're going to have the meeting, let's say the August first meeting, in there, it would be set up just like before. Let's aim for the August meeting back at, back in the room, and uh, uh, obviously, if something changes uh, CDC wise, that. Uh, that's not a good idea. We'll be back here on the Hollywood squares. Yeah. Is there is there anybody in this group who's not vaccinated? Anybody had any concern with? I think everybody up to the dais is vaccinated, correct? 
And so the only issue would be a member of the public and we have to rely on them to wear a mask if they're not, or you're vaccinated, so you're you're safe from them. Okay. So all right. Let me wait a minute. So the other part is uh, the chairs right now are all stacked and stored. Yeah. There's so no requirement. There's no there's no distance. There's social no distance social distancing, so we'll have no. public works. As John said, we're going to pretend that it's the seventy sixers game. Put put the room back to fifteen thousand. Okay. All right. And, uh, and that's and that's starting with the August meeting. I believe it's August first is the meeting. I believe. <laughs> Everybody okay with that? And, and in the meantime, we'll start moving forward on updating pricing and learning more about how to make the room potential for the hybrid and report mm -hmm. back to you. And All right. Could you also do an art? Uh, an alternate bid just to make the room better acoustics period yes we have that as a separate item That's okay good good but we have it, to we, it's been two years so i have to recontact that vendor and that was just a vendor for budget purposes now we have to determine there's more than one vendor as john right. points out we okay. have to, because of the dollar amount involved we may have to actually Go have to, to get an expert and write specs and go out to seal bids okay thank so you it, could get, but but we want. I'm glad to hear that you want to move forward. Mm -hmm. We have a budget. We may find that there's not enough or too much of the budget. But if that's where your goal is, now we know that we're all. It's worth the effort, and that if we bring something to you that says X Y, and it's within the dollar amount and so on, uh, you know, it's something well, it's worth doing. That question came up the last meeting with the ordinance, capital ordinance, as to gee, maybe under these circumstances, it's not as high on your list. But uh, I'm glad to hear that you want to pursue it, and we'll we'll start working on that. But we'll go back to the old way as of August first and see how it works out. All right. Thank you. Okay. I cover everything on uh, COVID. For now. All right. We're done there. Correspondence, Mrs. Lord. Uh, I have none. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion items. Oh, trash. Uh, status of solid waste, collection delays, curbside placement policies. Uh, what do we know? Have we heard anything good, bad, or indifferent as far as this week? Well, oh, last week our trash was picked up on time. Week late, but on time. Yeah. I mean, it, they did pick our trash up last week. I don't know. Did they carry over second day, Janice? No, I think they were done in one day. Right. Fern actually has a lot more information on, on last week's pickup. You know, uh, they started, I guess, on time in town on Thursday. And when I caught up with them in Newton's Landing, it was around four o'clock and they still had, I guess, half of Newton's Landing to finish up at that time. Uh, but the rest of the community uh, had been picked up. Uh, and then going out on uh, residents of Delanco uh, and inquiring as far as any streets that may have been missed or any sections, uh, nothing came back as far as that was concerned. Uh, there were three houses that came back that um, said their uh, the one house, their trash wasn't picked up at all. They had a small uh, trash can and a bag uh, that was missed. And then the other two had to do with uh, construction material and that was in the, uh, I guess, what you can buy at Home Depot, contractor bags, the big plastic bags, and uh, they had construction material in them. Uh, their regular trash cans were empty, but some of the bags were left behind. Uh, and if the new, uh, South Jersey uh, Seaside Trash Company is going by our ordinance. Uh, they were within, they were doing their job if they only took two bags of the trash that were there uh, from the construction stuff, but the regular trash was taken. So uh, I think it's more of a communication issue that we need to get out to our residents that these are the rules. Uh, you, know, you, you can put 15 bags out there, but they're only going to take two. Uh, that's spelled out uh, on our website. Uh, I went into delancotownship.com uh, and I just typed in trash 
and uh, a listing of guidelines were there. Uh, and in reading that, uh, that's where uh, I found that about just the two bags of, I guess, whether it's construction material or whatever other things that are being thrown out uh, would apply. Uh, as far as the fencing situation that we had on the one street uh, two weeks ago, uh, in there it clearly states that uh, it's only three bundles and they have to be tied uh, and it was specific on how that was done and it should not weigh more than 50 pounds. Uh, and I saw that a couple times in the guidelines, at no more than 50 pounds in the trash cans, no more than uh, 50 pounds on, I guess, the, the bags. Uh, so those are the things that I've seen. Uh, if we want to do a subcommittee as Ms. Fitzpatrick uh, has uh, suggested, uh, I'm okay in looking, uh, wanting to be a part of that committee or lead that committee uh, to take a look at our ordinance. Uh, and again, the guidelines that are there for uh, trash removal uh, here in town. Uh, I would ask that if we go down that road that we have either uh, Mrs. Lohr or someone from the uh, township office that has to handle phone calls uh, from the residents uh, because they would have that knowledge uh, to help us go over this. Uh, probably someone from environmental uh, and someone from public works. Again, just to review our ordinances and our guidelines and make sure that they're clearly spelled out. Uh, I know that we had asked about the large containers uh, where the truck would come in and just, you know, I guess have the one arm bandit that just picks up the, the one trash can, dumps it, and you don't have uh, guys on the back of the truck to uh, throw the trash in. Uh, we didn't, when we went out to bid, no, we didn't get any uh, proposals on that. No one bidded for that. But yet, Mr. Schwab said that Willingboro uh, has gone that route. We have Riverside and Del Rand who have gone that route. Uh, so there's still questions and, you know, maybe things to explore and uh, looking at what we do with trash here in town. Uh, well, I think the first thing that we need to do is to educate the public on what they should be using. 30-gallon uh, trash cans. Some residents have those huge uh, trash cans that have the lids on them and uh, these guys have to lift them and they're certainly more than 50 pounds if they stuff them and the other thing is they need to have a lid on it it, sh it shouldn't be overflowing if you ride around this town which I did during all this trash problems there's so many people that don't have lids on their trash cans white bags are stacked, overflowing, falling on the ground. I mean, I don't think our residents, because we have new residents coming and going, they don't even know what our rules are. So that's one of the first things. But I think the subcommittee could review these and make some changes, especially regarding the bulk items that are put out by clean outs and um, rental properties which is a clean out when they switch tenants. So I would like to be a part of that committee with you, a subcommittee with you, Fern, um, to review it and to educate our public on what we are trying to do to improve our service. Does everyone agree that that's the direction to go to create a subcommittee or do we want to independently want to, uh, you know, Looking at you know what Mrs. Lohr sent out, our our code is quite dated, um, and uh, you know when it's talking about uh, steam plants and ashes and and things like that, uh, it's it hasn't been touched in several years or decades, um, at least this century. But um, so it's going to probably need a, a complete rewrite. Uh, I looked at uh, probably six or eight different uh, surrounding communities, and pretty much they're all they're pretty thin uh, on uh, not really specifying uh, 
uh, you know, it's it's what Mr. Lett had special, you know, mentioned uh, the weight of the can, uh, uh, but not many uh, communities had a had a limitation on the number of cans. Uh, the difference uh, was apparent if if a community had the uh, automated trash pickup, you know, where it's a it's a specific uh, uh, can that uh, that that uh, those trucks use. Um, uh, but there wasn't, uh, I was kind of surprised that uh, a lot of towns uh, just had very thin requirements as far as their trash pickup. Um, but it's going to be a kind of a deep dive because uh, our, our, our code book is in this, in this chapter is really, really outdated. Um, but yeah, they, just, you know, just to let you know, the previous subcommittee did, we have a lot of that might be redone. I have it have in our computer, we change a lot of things, but we decided not to change to bring it out. But so a lot of that kind of detail has already been looked at and is ready to go. I think the key thing is what rules do you want? And then we'll make sure the ordinance says it or the ordinance gives you the authority to adopt the rules by writing resolution, for example. I think so the number of cans, what the rules the type, are. The number of cans, the type of can, that it's a closed sealed container, okay. that uh, a container that's uh, um, you know, that, you know, can get soggy, you know, just putting out in, tra in a trash bag or an open plastic bag. Uh, uh, one town did say, you know, keep, it's got to have a lid because if it gets rained on it, then we're, you know, we pay for trash to, uh, to be disposed of by weight. And we don't need to be paying for water weight going to the landfill. Um, uh, simple things like that. The other part of it is, is the clean outs. Uh, uh, if, if there's a clean out that's a, a home or an apartment turnover, then uh, I think the property owner needs to, to arrange for a separate, uh, um, needs to contract for, for separate pickup there or a dumpster. Um, but those are the things that- uh, They need to pay for their own. <laughs> I, I agree, Kate. And I, they you need know. to pay, yeah. Landlords, to, uh, rental properties, and cleanouts need to take care of their own trash. Yeah. Uh, there was one on Walter Avenue that took up almost half the block, uh, a cleanout from a house. It was, and how should we expect the other residents in town to pick up the tab? And, um, but I think, you know, receptacle wise, we're pretty decent with what we explain. It's just that the public isn't aware of it. And there was an article, somebody just uh, text me in the Burlington County Times regarding Willing Burrows uh, trash. They switched over to the one arm bandit and they're putting their trash in their recycling buckets now. So they're having a problem with that as well. So I think a lot of towns are dealing with this issue, but unless you educate the public on what, because right now they're not doing what our ordinance says. Um, and that's something we need to get the word out so that um, it's a lot easier to deal with. Yeah. Actually, going forward, if we run into uh, interruptions in the uh, you know, trash refuse sanitation pickups uh, off and on through the summer, uh, do we want to uh, have some kind of moratorium or suspension of a bulk pickup or uh, anything like that? Do we want to consider something like that? If we're only going to get one truck in town and you've got the a clean out that we can't really uh, enforce, we can't block it. Um, and that uh, that space in the tr in the one truck that comes to town on, on a Thursday prevents them from going getting down to the next street or the next couple blocks. Uh, do we want to uh, make that suggestion or encourage uh, uh, not to have bulk, bulk, uh, bulk pickups? at least uh, till we get through, see how this summer goes with uh, our contractor. Well, I think we should, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I think it is. And I think that the sooner we get working on this ordinance and get the public educated and change bulk pickups and clean outs, the better off the town will be and the trash collection will be. Can we, uh, in the in the interim, before we codify an ordinance or before your subcommittee, Fern and, and Kate, uh, you know, gets together and works on something, what is there? 
a policy, something that we could, we could put out and say, hey, you know, during this time uh, that we've, we've got an interruption in sanitation services, we're asking, you know, when you put uh, uh, your trash out, if it, we know it's a good day and where it's gonna be, you know, uh, a day or, or two day pickup process, or maybe skip a week that, uh, you know, we encourage people to put it in a sealed container, to not have trash out that's going to get uh, uh, soaking wet, that's not going to get uh, torn apart by animals. Can we put uh, a policy or or something into effect um, in the interim until we get the uh, you know until the subcommittee does its work and uh, that's already part of our ordinance. It, it, that's our, actually part of our ordinance. Bins must be watertight. Lids or covers must be fit securely. Containers must be maintained in such a way as to eliminate any potential danger of attracting animals, rodents, dogs. That's already in our ordinance. So we can actually co copy part of this and educate the public by it's, it's H, solid waste containers. That's, we have a whole section just on the containers itself. So our ordinance isn't that outdated, but we can actually somehow notify or put this on so that the residents know how to put their trash out during this time. Does paragraph apply to the residential? It's got parenthetically uh, commercial refuse bins. I'm looking at... Um, paragraph H, right? Yeah. I'm H, H is not residential. Dash nine. 245-9 receptacles under H, solid waste container. Oh, commercial refuge bins. Yeah, that's commercial okay. bins. That's the commercial, yeah. but there's another but we, one. It, 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 it has it earlier. I think the answer to your question there is that as long as it's not in conflict with this, right. Right. and you do it by resolution or by motion, so it's in writing, you yes. can set whatever additional rules you need for the health and safety of the community. Right. You can't amend the ordinance without going through an ordinance amendment. But if it's not in conflict where you're, this says, here's what you do and we're saying you no longer have to, you can, you can waive enforcement of certain things. But to re, I don't think there's anything in here that requires us to pick up mattresses and no, sofas. And, and it says that if you have it, here's how you put it out. Right. But uh, before H, then it has it has it in there. Correct. Two fifty nine you know, four five dash nine. You're correct. We do. It's it's in our it's in our ordinance. Under so, C. Right. So what we need to do is educate the public and then reinforce this ordinance to include cleanouts and um, rental right. properties. Yeah. So the the issue the issue with the bulk that we were discussing is if you make the determination that. And we've discussed it with the vendor that they will be able to pick up faster and more complete if they don't have to pick up the bulk items. And so we're not going to pick up the items. They'll be sitting out there. And so the question becomes, do we say resident take it back and store it back in your backyard garage basement? Do we say you can dispose of it yourself at the landfill? Here's how. Uh, or do we just leave it alone? So, or do we pick up, do we find another way to pick it up like with state body trucks and, or other trucks through other means? So you have to have the alternative, be prepared. If you say South Jersey is not gonna pick up your sofa, your mattress, here's how it's gonna be handled. You pay it, we pick it up with another truck or you gotta take it back and store it until the temporary emergency is over. So that's what you really have to think about uh, once you decide what to do we can find a way for you to do it. Don't worry about the, the technical how to do it. Right. Just figure Doug, out what you want to do. Right. Doug said that the Township Committee, working on the ordinance means you're working towards permanent changes. Doug said that you can do a resolution to supplement the code, the, this chapter, for, a, for temporary changes. Um, so that if Right now with the driver shortage and the worker shortage, it's very difficult for them to get two trucks because under pre this problem, um, they would have two trucks in town. One would get the regular trash, the, you know, the, um, the household trash, 
another one would be getting, another crew would be getting the couches, the mattresses, et cetera, et cetera. We don't have that. We're lucky to get one uh, truck in town. So there's also the option of a resolution to supplement this code uh, that you're allowed to do, but it would be a temporary to say, let's say, well, while we're while there is this driver shortage and labor shortage, um, I'm just using this as an example. Township committee, the resolution will limit the bulk to one piece per week, uh, and that would be, and then have an expiration that that this shall be enforced until uh, September 30th. Just using that as an example, um, and then revisit it. Have things improved? Have they not improved and you need to renew it for another 90 days or 60 days or whatever? You have the ability to do that too, to do these temporary um, resolu these resolutions for, uh, to supplement this for temporary measures. Um, you know, and then- okay. Does the committee wanna head in that direction that uh, say, you know, have a 90 day, uh, do the resolution as, as Janice suggests, nine, a 90 day period, if, if that's comfortable. And uh, just to prohibit uh, uh, bulk items uh, for the weekly trash pickup. And then as Mr. Richard, uh, Mr. Schwab said, you know, we'll try to figure out some alternatives so we don't have, you know, furniture lining the streets um, and what to do with that or what that's going to look at, look like uh, a month or two down the road. The downside of that, and I hate to play, you know, I'm going to, is that if you, you know, do that, that may help, you know, Again, since only one truck, they have to stop. They got to go to the landfill because so much bulk stuff is in there and they don't get back in town. It, and um, that's a reality. The right. downside is that there's no enforcement for this in the sense that you're talking about a Wednesday evening, all this bulk goes out. It, you know, it's going to, it's not something we're going to be out there enforcing and writing letters for and things like that. We just don't have that. There's personnel resources. Why not? Does the construction that? official work on Thursday? We we I used think. to have we used to put tags on the trash cans if they weren't trash suitable, if they were broken up, didn't have lids. We we did we had uh, orange tags or something that they were putting on at one time. I but think the big problem is the the landlord tenant you can invent a way with the rental registration form that comes out next year that the landlord has to put up a bond in the event of a clean out and he doesn't take care of it. Just like when you join a swim club, you got to put up money to be along in that swim club. You need to put up a bond to own a rental unit in Delanco and they will squawk and they will cry, but when they don't pick, when they don't get rid of the trash the right way, we're the ones stuck with the problem. And it's, it's just rude. But I, I don't want to see a regular homeowner who goes out and buys a new furniture set or a new bed and they can't get rid of their bulk item. That's not really fair to them. It's, you know, it's always in the tenant clean out. And that could be addressed easily with a simple uh, put up some money in case we have to use it to... Uh, clean your trash out just like the uh you know when public works goes to a house that's all weeded over and charges 180 dollars an hour to uh, clean up the property we put a municipal lien on the property why can't we do that with a bulk pickup after this policy is put in place actually john um we're seeing a lot of the clean outs on the resales of owner occupied yeah. units not so much the tenants and included in so. <laughs> yeah it's resale and tenant uh tenant uh whatever you call that, tenant change. Yeah. But I, th I, I think, John, the bulk that Mike was talking about is the regular stuff, not the clean out stuff. The stuff that the people you're talking about, they bought furniture, they're putting a new mattress or whatever, and it's out there. That's during this short-term thing. I think that before we get into that, we need to have that discussion with the vendor because for us to tell that to our residents and have it not make any difference, it may be that the vendor now can handle it. We don't know that. so. I would say that if that's something that you're potentially interested in doing between now and the July 12th meeting, we need to talk with a vendor. When we sat in the last uh, contract, they didn't have a problem with both. Right. 
It's only we because of the shortage of that's why right now. A, a temporary. Te a temporary measure, particularly temporary. for the clean outs, where somebody's putting. Yeah, two separate issues. Yeah, that, that, that set of furniture is no big deal. But when somebody's Normal. doing a clean out and they're going from, you know, curb to curb, you know, drive, that is what's slowing down the problem. When you only have one truck in town, that can mess up the whole rest of the town getting picked up. I rent the dump truck from the township for a hundred bucks for the day. That's yeah. done. That's so, John hasn't done that in quite a while. Why don't we consider bringing it back? I, I would defer to John on that. Uh, and on, on that there, uh, what you got to understand when you take a dump truck to the landfill, you are driving on trash, okay, which can potentially damage the truck. Uh, we went through tires like you would not believe, um, you know, over the years getting stuck and getting pulled out. Um, actually, we haven't been there in years, but I mean, uh, then you got to get the DEP stickers. Um, I, I think um, may, maybe uh, getting a dumpster and, and you know, uh, maybe have, uh, 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 you know, every other month a, a bulk pickup the, the, the residents can bring it out to the garage. That's a good idea. You know, uh, have an avenue until, um, now we have, I got a 20 yard dumpster out back here now, and there's been people that, that have missed trash. We've went out actually and picked some trash up and um, we emptied our cans today, all the cans along the river and everywhere, it was, Full to the top, unbelievable, unbelievable. So we're where this trash is coming from. I have no idea. Well, you know, maybe just just having a dumpster at a Public Works Garage right now is good enough for the uh, homeowner who is told that you know within this temporary policy, you know, you are responsible for bulk, and we are supplying your dumpster at the municipal. We're never going to get away from people not paying attention. Okay, that people. Correct. Right. John's been chasing people with brush and trying to have rules for brush uh, for as long as I've known John, and people still don't get it. Most most people don't get it. Okay, most people do get it. I'm sorry, I apologize. Most people get it, but there's always yeah. Right after brush goes through, there's somebody that just decides to trim their entire yard and they line up the whole street, you know, and then. <laughs> But so are we at, uh, a resolution for a moratorium on on the cleanouts or the bulk or both or none? You may find that they're gonna they're back to normal. We don't know that yet. Yeah. So why don't we get through this week here and, uh, and get uh, as far as getting the word out to the residents? Uh, no more than fifty pounds in the trash can and uh, two pieces of uh, I guess side bags or construction bags or uh, one piece of bulk or two pieces of bulk and uh, get that word out for this week. Uh, let's see how the trash people do uh, with their situation, continue to monitor that. And then uh, I'll get together with uh, Kate and uh, see if we can get a few folks on the subcommittee and set up a meeting in the next two weeks to uh, start taking a look at this. And uh, Mr. Schwab said there was paperwork that, or there was things that had been uh, put together already. We can take a look at that and get our heads together. Uh, we don't wanna reinvent the wheel or I guess start from scratch, but definitely take a look at what we have and you know mo make some modifications. And then as we go into that, then if we need to uh, change the ordinances uh, at some given point in time and put all that as a, I guess, one big ball of wax and take care of it. Burn, I'll, I'll make sure that I help you out on that too, John. For sure, right. John. We need somebody from Public Works. Yep. Right. And, yep. and Fern, 245-9 receptacles, that's the one. Under C, it actually describes what they can use yep. and it goes all the way down there. So we should let them know 
what they should be putting out because it actually says it right there in our ordinance. So somehow we need to get the word out to the residents. Again, something real short and sweet to yep. get us through this week. Uh, I don't want to get, you know, overly complicated in, in trying to communicate to the uh, to our residents that they have to do all these different things. But if we pick two or three things and just, you know, uh, hit those, uh, and then we can move on from there. How about if I put together some uh, type of notice that says, you know, with the shortage of drivers and limited laborers and trucks, you know, these are the receptacle requirements and then recommend and encourage that people hold as much of their bulk um, until the shortage is over. It's a good start. That's a start. Yes. Just, something, just something real quick. Here, here's the container requirements. And please, if you can hold bulk items um, until the driver and labor shortage it has, is over. We need a resolution or anything to designate the trash team or just uh, ad hoc? Nope. Nope. Right. And just say out. we accept the volunteers. <laughs> so uh, sort it out amongst yourselves and uh, tap who you, who you need. All right. We're, we're done with the trash discussion. Forever. All right. Hopefully. Uh, 2022 uh, DOT Municipal Aid Grant proje Project Selection. Now you got an email from uh, Harry. The last meeting, we talked about some various streets in general, and then John and Harry and I met, and we're making a recommendation for you to then pass a resolution at your July 12th, July 12th meeting. Uh, this is to... Uh, apply for all of Vine and one block of Maple, the one that's not done yet. Uh, and that would be applying for $250,000 for that, those locations, those two locations. If everyone's in agreement, then, then we'll put it on the agenda formally. What happens is uh, Harry and Janice will put this together, get it by DEP's uh, grant portal, and for the record, you'll then approve the, resolu the resolution of application at your July 12th meeting. And we'll meet the July 1st deadline this way. Is that acceptable, Vine and One Block of Maple? Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. OK. Are we done with our five-year road plan? Or are we moving? You know, we're really up, we're pretty much up to date uh, with the, the plan. It's more than a five-year plan. But we've yes. been following that plan. Exactly right. I, I have the plan here, but it goes up to uh, 2020. We'll pull it out and, and see whether we actually, I mean, he's he every single street was ranked. So the right. plan was there, whether or not we now have to actually take those next ranks and Say, here's what we finished, and, and we should update it. Thank you, John. That would so be I'll have good. Harry update the, the plan. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Questions on the uh, DOT project? Yeah, so as long as there's no objections, Janice, I don't think they need to actually take an action. We just know that, that all of Vine and the one block of Maple will be what you guys can submit, and then we'll do the resolution at the next meeting. Right. If they're all in agreement that this is the um, scope of the project, yes, right. That's that's fine. So we'll just, for the record, we'll put it in the minutes that you agreed that was the scope of the project. There are no no objections. Okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, item three: subcommittee formation for cannabis zoning and land use study. Um, I, I guess I guess to start off is the 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 uh, the tasking as to what what we're what we in the community are hoping to learn from this and what uh, what their charge is going to be as far as uh, fact finding and uh, and information uh, well i what, think i think one of the most important issues would be what would work for delanco if anything but i think we need to keep an open mind that there were pros and cons from the residents on both some issues where they didn't want it, environmental, water problems, smell, 
Some other issues were um, they wanted it, they thought it was feasible in town and that it would help for the tax base. So I think we need to have a subcommittee to look at other areas that have experience with it to find out other states or towns and see if anything works for Delanco. Um, and if it does, bring it back to the full committee and make some recommendations one way or another. Um, there are six different classes and I think that we should review each individual class to see if it would work in Delanco and get some background information. And I think I would like John Brown to be, I would like to work on this and I would, John, you don't want to do it? Okay. No, no I, I my, my reasoning is, is that you guys, you know, the four of you voted on this a month or so ago. So you pretty much put this on back burner for five years and to, to form yourself no, now, it should have been done before. It should have it. You're absolutely right. A subcommittee uh, should have been here next year. You, you really, you guys have taken the position that you want to see uh, how it pans out in other municipalities. And uh, that's respectfully your decision, but I'm not going to sit around and talk about it when I stated my, um, you know, my vote on it. And I, I don't want to talk about it after the fact. It's to me, it's too late. It's not too late because we can opt back in at any time. We didn't opt out for five years. We opted out in order to determine if it can work in Delanco. I knew you were going to ask me to be on this subcommittee and I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. To, you know, I don't have time. Okay. Anyway, I would like to be on if anyone else would like to volunteer um, to do that and maybe get someone from um, joint land use board. How about a citizen? Some citizen, someone from environmental advisory. I think we should have a little variety here so that we research it thoroughly to see if it will, if something could work in Delanco. There were so many people that were upset that we didn't do something. So let's, let's, let's look into it. If that's, that's an unfair characterization. We did do something. And we took uh, the what was what was the safe action for the community to give us time and space to see what this uh, as this uh, comes together. There's uh, uh, well, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to set up a subcommittee so that we can take the next step. Yeah. We often and, ask to give us time to do that. Yeah, and uh, you know. The last couple of years, two, three years that uh, this has been rattling around Trenton and the, the legislature uh, uh, couldn't come up with a solution and uh, that uh, was politically safe for, for, uh, for them. And they put it on the ballot and that, you know, here, here we are, but they really left the details, uh, you know, which are still being worked out. But every time uh, Mr. Heinhold would say, hey, this is coming, we should think about it. And I know I mentioned it several times over the last two years that as committee members, and I, you know, this was on public record, that people need to look at what's going on in other states that have a couple of years behind uh, them in experience. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's something that I've mentioned several times repeatedly that, uh, you know, let's look at you know, what's going on in Arizona, what's going on in Washington state, what's going on in Colorado. And, uh, you know, there's many, many studies, uh, medical, law enforcement, uh, social, uh, uh, educational, I mean, the impact, uh, all kinds of studies that are out there from those different states that uh, I've pointed to, um, you know, said this is, you know, this is something we need to, to look at, whether we're tasked or formally set up a structure as we're doing now, that's been our homework assignment for the last uh, two years at least. Um, so, uh, this is not something new, but uh, how it's going to actually, what it's going to look like in New Jersey. And uh, as, I, as I said earlier, you know, uh, you know, depending, you know, it, it, it received a, a significant vote in favor of, but it's another thing, whether that's something that someone wants to live next to or down the street to, you know, to. So those, 
those numbers are uh, are somewhat false in 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 uh, when they're bandied about. So, um, but it's up to all of us to uh, look at the data that's out there and everybody and other experiences. So, but uh, as far as tasking, do we want to put an open uh, uh, invitation, uh, as I did to the different boards and commissions uh, for that uh, state planning uh, endorsement? Um, we can send something to all the board uh, chairmen and uh, board and commission chairmen to uh, solicit a volunteer, uh, planning board or EAB or whatever. And uh, uh, if we want uh, someone that's unaffiliated with any board or commission uh, to, to round out that, uh, that group. Um, we have what, uh, two committee members, Kate, you wanted to do it. Um, Fern, Chris, interest? <clears throat> Yeah, I will. You yeah. broke up again. Is that a yes? Yeah, yeah, I will. All right. So we got our two committee members, and uh, uh, I'll come up with it. Uh, I'll work with Mrs. Laurel on a letter to uh, the boards and commissions and solicit a, a volunteer from uh, what do you want? The Joint Land Use Board, you said, and EAB. EAB. I thought uh, he, was want... on it. he had a lot of education on the subject, and um, you know he he was pretty. He had the guts to voice his opinion. Uh, who who is in public life uh, on boards, and he was not afraid to say how he feels. I can't I think... hear you, John. Why not, Kate? It's the acoustics in my, my room. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I said I would like to uh, nominate Matt Bartlett to be on that board because he was not afraid to speak his mind and he was uh, you know he took a position on it without you know being pushed from the left or pushed from the right and I think when you form the subcommittee that's what you need you need both right. sides I agree I, I think Matt would be a good um, member to the subcommittee if he's in agreement thanks JP I would. So we'll see what replies you get back from the uh, planning board and EAB and, and fill it out. Is that okay? Yeah. All yes. right. And I don't know, Jesse, okay. if you think um, you want some input on this subcommittee or you want to stay out of that. I think uh, we should stay out of it. Okay. Because whatever you decide is not going to be a law enforcement enforcement right. issue. Okay. How about someone from economic advisory? Good idea. John Brown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start one way or another. Hey, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe one of the new uh, the newbies, Joe Chaska. Uh, just came in to ask me, hey, John, what can I do? What are we going to do with this board? You know, so, hey, here's something for him. There we yeah. go. Well, Ballin told him for it. There we right. go. <laughs> All right. I'll work on something uh, with uh, Mrs. Lohr and Mr. Schwab, and uh, we'll, we'll send out an email and see what, uh, how big a, a net we can, uh, what we can catch. So anything else on this on the uh, subcommittee for cannabis? Can you both? Oh, the Board right. of Education. They said to ask, and you do have the Board of Ed on your other subcommittee. Somebody just posted uh, the Board of Ed. We should ask somebody from the Board of Ed. Good idea. All right. Okay. Uh, Richard and John, I think we've got one item for executive. Yeah. All right. One short item. And... Uh, if that concludes the discussion and need a resolution for executive session uh, for just contracts, legal? Legal. Contract. Yeah, legal. Uh, I guess legal. Future Probably contracts. Probably at the discussion and we'll be back and then uh, if that's all, we'll close out. We don't expect it to take any action. Uh, what would be the resolution number? 2021-88? For executive session, I'll make the motion. Second. Mrs. Laura's lips are moving, but I don't hear anything. I muted her. <laughs> there we go. 
Okay, so it's a motion by Mr. Brown, second by Ms. Fitzpatrick to adopt resolution 2021-88 uh, for executive session for legal matter. So moved. Okay. Um, all right, everybody. Give all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Hi. Hi. I'm doing this from my phone tonight because my computer decided to do an update at the last minute. So right. please bear with me. My battery's running out. So. Yeah, we're updating. All right. I actually am going to do this a different way. Hang on, everybody. I thought it was going to be a quick meeting tonight. I know. I'm so sorry. All guests, I'm going to be putting you in the waiting room for the executive meeting. You'll be let back in when it's over. You guys are all set to finish up. I got a, I got a question about the crosswalk on Burlington Avenue. Uh, I was speaking to the owner's wife, or, or uh, well, she's an owner too, uh, Michelle. Uh, she said they turned the volume down. It's much better. Okay. I don't know if anybody heard any complaints uh, about the beeping, beeping, beeping from the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, the crosswalk. Yeah. 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 Mike did. Kate did. Jesse did. What? They all here? dealt with it. Pardon me? Mike, Jesse, and Kate all talked to the owner and talked to the county. Okay. So we're good there for a little while? As long as everybody's satisfied with the lower volume. Okay. Yeah, it's working. It's at 50%. Uh, the people are blowing through that thing, though, yeah. uh, according to uh, Michelle DeLova. And Lou had to go out and cross a couple kids across the street because nobody was stopping. So uh, I, we I'm need actually to hitting the button, though, because I had a woman just dart out on, on foot in front of me. She never hit the pedestrian walkway. So, I mean, you can leave horse to water. The but... lights were flashing. I saw the yeah, lights flashing. And somebody still rode through. You know yeah, what? Well, we can always do a, a sting like they do in Riverton. Uh, you know, uh, put a put a uh, plainclothes officer in that crosswalk. And... I'm saying a pedestrian just jumped out in front of me while I was driving the speed limit. She didn't bother hitting the button, so it's all well and good that we spent that money, but they're not using it to yeah. its full potential. Maybe we could. Complain. Maybe we could put um, the police sign, the digital sign, as you come across the bridge, uh, just warning people that there's a pedestrian, you know, crossing okay. sign. Yeah. I don't know. Guys aware of that. I'll pass that on to Jesse. I thought somebody wanted to comment about it during the regular meeting. Yeah, I yeah, would have done it when Jesse was here. Right. But I'll, I'll pass it on to him. Thank you. All right. Anything else for the public session? Motion to adjourn. I'll motion to adjourn. All in Second. favor? Aye. Aye. Good night. All right. Good night, everyone. everyone. Good, Good night, night, everybody. Right. Thanks, Good night. Thank Thanks Aaron. You're welcome. Thanks, guys.